the whole, whoever was at Zany's, I mean, that was a surprise, right? Yeah. So we did, uh, we were hanging out because I knew he came down. Because I talked to Shane quite a bit. Like Shane's going, uh, not that, I, I just like talking to him because he's, I mean, he's, I think he's very funny. And then like, he's just where he's at in his career. And it's starting to like, really, I think after this next special, I mean, Shane's going to really be uh, one of the top touring. Act. I mean, he already is a very top touring act. He's going to be one of the top. And so he's a good dude. And just, uh, so we were just in town. So we were hanging out just that day. And then I was like, I kind of was, I've been kind of wanting to go up. Uh, and then I was like, you want to go up? And then he's like, yeah. So we were like, let's just see. And then, so we, you know, it was uh, I, one that people I don't think expected me and Shane to do yeah. something. And then, so we just called Zanies and they were like, yeah. And they put it on sale and it sold out immediately, which we both, you never get used to that. You're both like in your head, like, is this going to sell out? Like, you think like there's dude, no way you thought that. I swear you have a moment, dude. You just you know when you put yourself out there a little bit and you're like, what if it doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> like imposter think, syndrome. Yeah, like yeah, and you think like you're like all right, me and Shane are gonna do a show, and then everybody's like, we're good. I mean, because it was in. <laughs> yeah, like, let me make a call. At like four thirty, and the show's at nine mm -hmm. or nine thirty. How quickly did it sell out? I think in fifth, in like ten minutes or so. It was like it was like oh, if you're going in the, yeah, yeah, what you're in Nashville. Really? You got to catch that. You're fired the fuck up oh, getting to watch yeah. Shane and you. It was. I want to do it again because it's like the people that I uh, we went in there. Actually, we had did some work. I needed to, I needed to like kind of run my hour and like pull some. I needed to figure out some time stuff with my hour, and then Shane just went up there. And but we went up there together at the end, and that's what I think people like the most is it just me and him on stage hanging out. And talking and so i mean yeah i hope I, we talked about we want to do it again like it was because we both really enjoyed it and uh i really like him and uh he's a and he's a great i mean he's a truly great great comic possibility you guys torn together no i mean the only thing i'm clean so it's like i couldn't the audience that comes to see me even though a lot of people that would see me love shane but i wouldn't i mean i my kids can come to my show like it's all ages so it's i wouldn't want to put that much you know, like someone, if that's the hard part of being clean, you're kind of on your own in the fact that like, I, there's only so many, I mean, the comics I bring out with me, not that they're all, they're not all clean outside of me, but they have to be clean when they come do my shows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, outside of that, it's, it's like kind of hard to be like, cause it's like my crowds are, I, I just can't, I just really can't do it. But so it's like, that's why a situation like that, where we just like kind of pop on last minute yeah, is because then, you know, I think it's people that are comedy fans and right. they completely they, understand that this is like an anomaly of Nate and yeah, Shane yeah, like, coming yeah, out there. It's not like there's versus like, you know, I'm, I might have an entire my real show. Like there's gonna be an entire family come that's bring their grandparents, <laughs> the grandchildren. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, huh? they're ready for Shane. And I think they think we'll find Shane very funny. But they also might be like. <laughs> We didn't expect to hear all those words, you know? <laughs> Dude, we had that situation this past weekend. With what? At Kittle Fest and Laser. Yeah. Do you know who Uncle Laser is? I think I've heard his name. He's a, he's a comedian out of Austin, Texas. He's, yeah. He's hilarious. And I went and saw him at Zany's a few weeks ago. And it's all... You know, pussy eating yeah. ass. It's as dirty as it gets. Single mom jokes, yeah, yeah. young yeah. gun, like yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So Kittle meets Laser at Beer Olympics and reaches out to Laser. Is like, hey, I have Kittle Fest coming up. Would you like to come to it and do some stand up, like ten minutes? And and Laser's like, absolutely, I'll go. And so once I caught wind of this, I caught wind of it at the party, and I have seen his stand up. And it's, you know, me and Will are there. A bunch of our friends are there, but there's also his aunts, his uncles, his grandparents, like yeah. there's an older crowd as well, buttoned up, wearing their Sunday best type of yeah. stuff at a frat party, essentially. Yeah. I told him, I was like, brother, have you heard Laser stand up? He's like, no. I go, all right. Yeah. Okay. And he's the first person to go up. And dude, it was probably the most mixed review thing I've ever watched in my life. Because there's like me and Will are literally laughing. like probably standing there like no, smiling doing this. So I mean, it's funny. It's for a crowd that's, you know, rips Marlboros and wears NASCAR. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's... They're not scared of hearing the language, but then yeah. some people are, are can be surprised at how dirty something can actually get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It brings out his harmonica. It talks about one's the pussy and one's the ass and that's how he learned to eat out chicks. And I'm just looking at the grandma and like, she's <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, she's looking like leans over her husband. Like, do we? What He's is got this? the harmonica playing that like, gets him out of that can it just get you out, out of shit. You just it hit was, some harmonica. Yeah, all right, dog, it was so funny because he didn't hold back. He didn't look at the crowd and go, "I should probably tighten a couple things up." He yeah. he went full bore right into There's it. There's no doubt yeah. that I fully believe 
his eyes glazed over and he knew the situation he was in. He's like, I just got to fucking get through this. Just got to yeah. own it. Yeah. Just got to run it. Yeah. I mean, some of you get, you're like, it is what you do. So yeah. it's like, yeah. just go do what you do. And then, you know, they either get their laugh or they won't. What was the choice for you to go clean? Uh, I just started that way. Like, uh, it was just how, you know, grows up in the South, Southern Christian, like, well, I wasn't allowed to watch anything that stuff like that. And so my, uh, 13th. Uh, yeah, Friday 13th. <laughs> okay. yeah, so we yeah. saw that. We were watching yeah. some of your bits before. That shit was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't I mean, I wasn't allowed to watch. And, I, and there's so many movies I've missed because I just was never South allowed Park. to watch them. I never watched South Park. Yeah. Damn. And I still have, I know, uh, I never watched it. Uh, when we weren't allowed to watch The Simpsons. That was a big deal when I was young. Simpsons came out. It was like, because uh, Bart was like against authority. Like, yeah. So it's like a lot of parents didn't like that. It was like this kid. That's like, nuts. Did your dad man. watch yeah. The Simpsons? No, no, no one did. It'd be like Sunday night football's over, Simpsons come on. Yeah. No, it was, uh, yeah, it was just very, I mean, I, I just, when I grew up, it was just a lot, it was just different. Mm -hmm. It was very, the South was pretty strict and uh, like what you could do. I mean, you couldn't dance. Our, uh, I went to uh, Donaldson Christian Academy. But they did, we didn't have a prom. We had a, like a banquet and then you couldn't dance because it was like dancing was not. And it wasn't like the parents don't believe dancing is bad. They believe dancing is bad. But it's like you just would have, you know, back then, I mean, an 80 year old in 1997 that she thinks dancing is bad. So you're kind of like not doing it mm -hmm. to be like kind of. You can get a little space, leave some room for the Lord. Yeah, you just go. Well, we would, we could, you could go. The parents would then rent. They would rent out a room, and and then everybody could have like a more of a prom dance, kind of after. You would do a banquet, like that's kind of a proper thing for like you know those older people to be like, oh, we're not, you know. And then you go do mm -hmm. the dance thing after. Yeah, it was you know. So it's like I grew up. You just grew up in under those like uh, standards. So it's like I just started. I just started clean, and then uh, I was always clean, and and then you know once you start. It's like kind of just the only way I go now.